A 14-year-old girl marries a rude middle-aged man. She looks forward to her wedding night with anxiety, wondering if her husband's hands will be as soft as hers. The maid of honor is horrified to say that Lucretia's husband's hands are hard and firm. When he beat me. Hard. Lucretia reassures the maid and says that from now on she won't have to be beaten anymore. But as a young girl, she was still too naive. Lucretia was not only unable to protect her mates, but also unable to protect herself. After bathing, Lucretia sat her day on the edge of the bed and waited quietly. At that moment, there was a rush of footsteps outside the house. But Lucretia, who was expecting her way night, was not treated with tenderness by her husband. She had been in pain and suffering all night. Lucretia cried until dawn, and her husband Giovanni woke up the next day to see the blood on the bed and became even more impatient. Virgin, you must be unique in your family. Every night since then, her husband's tireless efforts to fulfill his marital obligations became Lucretia's greatest torment. Because after one night of sex, she would be covered in bruises. Lucretia couldn't understand why marriage was like this. The only respite she had was when her husband went hunting during the day. One day Lucretia was wondering when she met a horseman named Paul. Lucretia was surprised to find Paul's hands were soft. Will they be hard someday? I know not, my lady. Their fingers slowly slipped together until they were intertwined, and the atmosphere gradually became so. In the days that followed, Paul and the maid listened to Lucretia's screams of pain outside the room every night. In the daytime, Paul would take Lucretia to the woods with his horse for a walk and hoped to clear her nighttime gloom. Paul couldn't understand how Lucretia, who was so beautiful and noble as the daughter of the Pope, could be so abused by her husband. What happened to Lucretia made Paul very sad and inspired his desire to protect her. Soon after, Lord Giovanni fell off his horse while hunting, resulting in a broken right leg. Because Paul had secretly set a trap in the saddle the night before, Lucretia could not hold back her laughter at this scene. After breaking his leg, Giovanni was not only unable to go out hunting during the day, but also unable to torment Lucretia at night. And this situation will continue for several months. The smart Lucretia also pretended to serve her husband with care and understanding. This in turn made her husband, who had treated her roughly before, feel guilty. He said he would forgive Lucretia for coming from a bad family, and her nobility comes from her soul. Lucretia, with a great sense of family honor, had to swallow her anger. She had to accept her husband's kindness and say that she had the misfortune of having the blood of the Borgia family running through her veins. After the gross disguise is over, Lucretia can finally enjoy a brief moment of freedom. She and Paul go on a date in the deep, quiet woods. She looks at Paul's reflection in the pool and can't help but kiss the water. Paul feels that the noble Pope's daughter could never have kissed him. Lucretia kissed him and felt a sweetness and happiness she hadn't tasted in a long time. A horseman sneaks into the ladies' room late at night under the cover of a maid, and the lady was ready for his arrival. Lucretia quickly and consciously removed all her clothes. The violent noise they made woke up her husband, who was downstairs recovering from his injuries. He angrily got up from the bed and followed the sound. The maids said they were preparing butter for tomorrow's breakfast, so they made a squeaking sound. Luckily, the maids helped cover Lucretia and Paul, the stable boy who was upstairs, so we didn't find them. Giovanni's accidental injury allowed Lucretia, who had been abused for so long, to finally try a little sweetness. She also falls under the spell of Paul's tenderness. On a happier note, Lucretia gets a chance to go back to her father's house thanks to her brother's wedding. Cesare was surprised to hear his sister's voice and embraced her happily. Cesare saw his sister again after a few months and immediately ran to his favorite Lucretia. As soon as the two of them met, they had endless conversations. Cesare was anxious to know how his sister was doing after the wedding, but Lucretia was afraid that her brother would be worried. So she buried all those heartbreaking experiences in her heart and said she was doing fine. When Cesare wanted to know more details about her life, she avoided talking about it by saying she wanted her brother to go play with her. Her 10-year-old brother's wedding is coming soon, and this time the bride is a beautiful, mature woman. However, Lucretia is immediately disenchanted with her sister-in-law. The bride dared to wink at Lucretia's second brother, who was officiating at the wedding. What they didn't know was that when Juan, the second brother, went to communicate about the marriage, he was already having an affair with his sister-in-law-to-be. The two of them had a brief date in the hallway, directly outside the wedding room. On her wedding night, Juan hypocritically tells his sister-in-law to be as nice to his little brother as she is to him. Now, my husband, are you 
ready. Then Sanja strips off her clothes and makes out with her young husband. The wedding is over in a hurry. Lucretia was not impressed by the union. It seemed that her own sad marriage gave her no hope. But the wedding was over and she had to get ready to go back to her husband and it took Cesare only a few days to detect the slightest change in her sister's mood. He also saw that she was no longer the carefree girl she once was. He pressed Lucretia about what Giovanni did for fun. Hunting? The marital bed? I just like him already. Lucretia says that her husband recently had the good fortune to break his leg, so she was able to have some free time. But after the joke, they both knew it was only temporary. Soon Lucretia returned to her husband's side, and Giovanni seemed to be recovering a little faster than she thought he would. Now that his leg is slowly healing, he can verify this with his wife tonight. Lucretia is shocked and asks if they are going to sleep together tonight. Giovanni has been sleeping alone for a long time after all. The woman deliberately sprinkled a basin of water on the floor before going to bed, and then sat her day enchantingly on the bed to reveal her shoulders. At this time, the husband walked in on crutches and saw this sexy scene immediately accelerated the pace of approaching her. However, the next moment he slipped on the water on the floor. Lucretia immediately pretended to be concerned about her husband's injury. However, she was too weak to hold her husband, who was too big for her, and caused his injuries to become more serious. Lucretia's plan was a complete success. She thought she would be relieved for the rest of her life. But then came the bad news from her father's family. The Borgia family. Giovanni tells Lucretia that the French army is heading towards Rome. This means that Lucretia's father may not live long. Lucretia is adamant that I will always be my father's daughter, my lord. She also said that the Sforza army and his cousin, Caterina had promised to support the Pope, as promised in the marriage contract. So she believed that Giovanni would not break his promise. However, Giovanni's cousin had already broken her promise. Lucretia realizes that her husband intends to renege on the terms of their marriage contract and not send troops to support the Pope. He even made a sarcastic remark at this point that deposing Lucretia's father and ousting him would be as gratifying as getting rid of a pig in the Vatican City. Such mean-spirited words made Lucretia sick. Perhaps your words offend me. Forgive me then for speaking so plainly. Giovanni also said directly, that if Florence allowed the French army to pass, then the Sforza's army will stand with the French. Faith with her husband's betrayal, Lucretia almost lost her footing. In the end, she went back to her room with the help of her maid. At the same time, her papal father in Rome was in a state of anxiety. He was anxious to know the attitude and actions of his son in Maldivari, so he sent his mistress Julia to find out what was going on. Cardinal Rovere, who had defected to the King of France, also came to Florence to negotiate. The French king offered a series of outrageous terms that would avoid war. First, the French army would be allowed to pass and 25,000 French soldiers to be stationed in Florence. Secondly, Rome had to pay for 100,000 gold coins. Finally, the Medici family, the Pazzi family, and the Borgia family were asked to provide hostages as a gesture of goodwill. The cowardly king of Florence chose to compromise and finally welcomed the French king into the gates himself. On the other hand, Julia finally arrives at Giovanni's castle. However, Giovanni's intention to break the contract was already clear. Julia understood that there was no need to talk anymore, so she went to look for Lucretia. Lucretia has been bedridden since her last illness. She was nauseous and vomiting in the morning. Lucretia seriously suspected that she was suffering from swamp fever. But hearing this, Julia had a different answer in mind. She asked Lucretia if her husband would sleep with her every night. Lucretia said he had been sleeping alone since he had a hunting accident and was injured. Julia returned to the bed and told Lucretia that they both had to leave before dawn and that no one must know because she knew by now that Lucretia was pregnant and that the father of her baby was not Giovanni.